So far we've talked about the kinds of envelopes that look like this. They have an attack phase where the sound is coming in from silence to its peak volume over a certain amount of time. And then we have a sustain phase where the note is being held at its full volume for a certain amount of time. And then we have a release phase where the sound is going away back to silence over a certain amount of time. And these are really useful, but there is just one more thing we can add into this mix just to maybe reflect a little bit more how some real world instruments work. The final ingredient that we're going to add to the mix is the decay phase, and this comes straight after the attack phase. And it tries to help us model instruments that don't just sustain their volume at the full amount of the attack, they maybe have a front to the sound and then come away again. And a really good way to illustrate that is to think of a violin. When you're playing a violin with the bow, you can get a really nice bite to the front of the sound, a kind of accent where the sound goes, bah, and it's got that kind of front to the sound. But when the sound is being sustained, it's actually not at the same level as that full energy of the start of the note. And that's what we try to model with a decay phase. So essentially what we're saying here is that there's a period of time where after we've risen up from silence to the full volume of the attack, we want to come away again from that peak volume and sustain the note maybe somewhere a bit lower, maybe sometimes higher, but it's normally a little bit lower. And the decay phase is the amount of time that we go from the peak of the attack down to the kind of normal level of the sustain. And this might mean that we sustain the note not at full volume like we were doing before, but we sustain it at maybe 0.75 or 75% of the attack volume or 50% of the attack volume. And our decay phase is just the gradual decrescendo or the de gradual getting quieter of the note from that top peak of the attack to where it's going to have its normal level and normal volume. To add a decay period to any note that we're playing on a synthesizer, we have to add two things. First of all, the amount of time or the amount of beats that we want this decay to happen over, and then the level that we want the note to actually sustain at, because for it to work, we have to go from an, the attack level, where the, where the note starts at when it reaches the end of the attack, and where we want it to just sustain at. So that's something we can set in Sonic Pi, and all of those have a default, and the, the, the default attack level and sustain level is the same. They're both one. So the sound, if you don't change anything, will just be at one. It'll have an amplitude of one all the way through the note. However, if we want to come back a little bit from where we reach in the accent of the start of the note, then we just need to set where this decay is gonna decay back to. It might decay from a full volume or one, as an amplitude value and coming back to say 0.75 or 0.5. So let's do that. Let's say that we want this note. So this is the note that we had before. It comes in over 12 beats and, and at the moment it just comes in over four beats, sustains at full volume for four beats and then goes away over four beats. So this is our four beat attack. Then we've reached the full level. So we're gonna sustain that for four beats and then we're gonna go away again over four beats. So what I'm going to do now is something slightly different. I'm going to reduce my attack to two beats. This is two seconds of time. So the note will reach its full volume or, or an amplitude of one over two beats or two clicks in the metronome. Then what I'm going to do is have a decay period of two beats. So we want our initial attack volume to come down again a little bit over the course of two beats. So I'm going to say that I want to come down to 0.75 of where we were before. Actually, no, let's make it 0 0.5 so it's easy to hear. Which means that when the note is sustaining over these four beats, the volume level or the amplitude will be 0 0.5 for all of those four beats. And then we'll be going from 0 0.5 back to zero over the course of the release period, which is four beats again. So if we had a look at an envelope, if I was to try and draw this out as a graph, it would look like this, where we have the first phase, uh, the attack phase where we go from zero to the attack volume, which is set as one. Then we come back away from that, from the attack level to the sustain level over the decay period, which is two beats. Then we stay at our sustain level for four beats, and then we go back down to zero again over the course of four beats. So this note is still going to last for 12 beats, but we've got a slightly different shape, a different envelope to the sound. So let's have a listen to this. So it's going to be a much faster attack and then coming away again after that. So it's attack, then decay, then sustain at a quieter level, and then release over four beats.
There we go. Wow, it's fantastic. I can kind of predict what the sound is going to do just because I understand these ideas of attack, decay, sustain, and release. And so that is our envelope. Really, everything else we do on top of this is a modification of this basic idea that there are four phases. The phase that goes from silence to the peak attack volume, which might be a full volume, and then there might be a decay if you want to include that, so you add a decay value and come back to a certain sustain level. Then you choose how long this note is going to hang around for, that's the sustain phase, which can be any amount of time, and then we choose how long it's going to take for the, the note to disappear, to go back to silence again, and that's the release phase, which again, can be any amount of time that you want, and you can have all of these things happening over an incredibly small amount of time, and so it's really just slightly changing the, the colour or the shape that you get in your ears, or it can be a really interesting story that unfolds over a, a really large amount of time. It's completely up to you, but these are really powerful tools, and in the next video, I'm going to challenge you to get into action and use them for yourself.